All right. So hello, everyone. Welcome to Celebrate DNA Day. Um, this initial part is being live streamed. We have the camera right here pointed at our inner fishbowl, which is great. Um, for people, and we'll turn off the live stream as we get further into the event. So don't be afraid. We want to inspire some community dialogue after our main speakers, or I guess our kickoff speakers, um, are finished with their remarks in, in about 10, 15 minutes or so. We'll shut down the live stream. So folks who are watching live, don't worry. We have lots more Citizen Science Month events for you. Um, so you can tune into those later. We just wanted to have this be more of an interactive dialogue, but also have something for our friends on the internet as well. Uh, for those who are with us in the physical room, uh, here at the wonderful Westwood Public Library. We have snacks over in the corner there. So please grab some snacks. We've got Subway. Um, we have some cookies. Uh, I try to get something for everybody. So there are fruits, veggies, popcorn, etc. So please make sure you get some snacks before all is said and done. I also printed out what you would normally see in a slide deck. I thought, why not get a little retro with it here? Um, so, and I'll, I'll advance some of the slides too so our friends on Zoom can also see what we're talking about for our kickoff here. So I'm Caroline Nickerson. Uh, I'm with the SciStarter team. SciStarter is the world's biggest citizen science organization. It's currently Citizen Science Month all throughout April. So I have some of our SciStarter flag in the back and show you some calendars if you want calendars for Citizen Science Month. And for those watching online, you can get your calendars online pretty easily. Um, you may be wondering, what is citizen science? It also goes by the name neighborhood science, community science, participatory science. Um, how we think of it at SciStarter is citizen science is any way a member of the public is meaningfully part of the scientific enterprise. Um, so that can be monitoring water quality. That can be studying the night sky for NASA. Actually, during the eclipse this coming Monday, NASA has a ton of projects, and they're all on SciStarter. If you want to help them do some amazing eclipse research. Um, and the Los Angeles Public Library does a lot of these programs through their neighborhood science program. So definitely check that out. Um, and if you go to SciStarter, you can find thousands of citizen science projects. But um, this month, Citizen Science Month, and I put some examples of some projects in our bulletin, um, our, I guess our, our slide deck here. Um, our featured project is the All of Us Research Program. Um, for those who are here in person, you can actually participate today and uh, get involved. Um, so, like, yes, party club. So for those of you who are in the physical room with us, don't miss out on that opportunity if you feel so inclined. Uh, for those of you who are watching online, you can go to joinallofus.org forward slash California to get involved. Um, there are a number of different partners with the All of Us Research Program. I'm going to let the All of Us folks tell you more about what they do in just a second, uh, but they are our featured project. This event is thanks in part to the network of the National Library of Medicine, All of Us Research Program, um, and they, the programs in there that they have. Um, they've empowered us to create uh, tutorials for citizen science in English and Spanish, to do events like this one in partnership with the LA Public Library, and they help us showcase a lot of different citizen science projects. I also wanted to, because we have some featured speakers here to kick us off, showcase in our little printout here, the LA LGBT Center, a really inspiring group that provides more services to the LGBTQ community than any other uh, group in the world, which I find really awesome and great. And Sage will tell you more about that. Uh, the Office of the City Clerk is also here, all about civic engagement. So for those of you who are in the physical room, talk, you can talk to them. Uh, but otherwise, uh, LA provides lots of services to folks. So definitely look at the City Clerk's website. We also have Danielle J. G. Garza here uh, as one of our featured speakers. Um, and he's going to talk about um, his career, uh, his passions, public health, uh, empowering um, folks. And it's all part of our theme of celebrating DNA Day by a celebration of genetics and equity research and how you can get involved with the All of Us Research Program. And of course, I'd be remiss to say, and I would definitely be getting a text from Darlene at SciStarter, if I didn't let you know that it's the 1 million acts of science right now. So if you use our hashtag, 1 million acts of science, you will make my boss's day. Uh, and, and also, uh, you'll be, we're pulling it all in on our website from hashtag 1 million acts of science. Take a picture of this event. Hashtag 1 million acts of science. Tag all of us. Tag SciStarter. Tag all the All of Us California accounts. Okay, so enough of that. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here and spotlight this video really quickly. So we can hear from the people you came here to hear from. So let me spotlight for everyone. There we go. All right, the camera's facing right at you all, which is great. Um, all right, so um, we have our microphones so the people in the Zoom room can hear you if you want to pass it around. But um, if you want to start off, all right, say. <laughs> 
Science of Cancer Latinos in San Antonio in 2022. I was one of the guest, guest speakers and I saw the poster for all of us and I said, Is that all of us? Because I'm not in there. So it's not all of us. And somebody thought it was funny, so they invited me to participate. And I've been a uh, patient advocate for HIV for over 23 years. I'm a cancer survivor. Uh, I was diagnosed in 2015. So that got me interested in research. Uh, I'm sure we'll answer more questions, but part of my advocacy work is um, my parents are immigrants, and I feel like a lot of our medical history was left at the border because my parents didn't talk about issues. So for any everything that they didn't talk about, um, I'm over. I'm over doing it. <laughs> so I'm, talk, I'm speaking for them, and hopefully for other people that don't talk about their medical issues. We're so grateful to have your voice. Thank you. <laughs> Any of you could tell us about the All of Us Research Program, but who, who wants to take this question? Define it for us for folks watching online. What does All of Us do? Do you want to take it? Or, or I, it? I think you're more qualified. <laughs> all right. So the All of Us Research Program is a national effort to enroll at least a million uh, participants living across the U.S. There's a large focus on including uh, groups who have historically been underrepresented in biomedical research. Um, and anyone living in the U.S. over 18 is eligible. Um, yeah, we just want to learn more about health and how like environment, lifestyle, and genetics all play a role in health outcomes. And hopefully we can come up with better treatments uh, for individuals based on all the differences. Um, yeah, and again, uh, mostly we're just learning about why we just want to learn more about um, what makes people sick and how to keep our population healthy. Fantastic. Um, so how does someone participate in all of us? How do you do it? Um, so to participate, you have to create an account. Um, you do need access to like a phone number or email address for verification purposes. Um, but you just create an account and you will go through some consent processes that will inform you of exactly what you're signing up for. Uh, it will go through uh, the type of questions that you'll be asked and any risks uh, from participating. Then after that, you can start doing some surveys. Uh, there's like six initial surveys and more come out on an ongoing basis. Uh, each survey, they typically take around like five to 15 minutes, depending on um, how fast or slow you might go. Uh, you can also start and stop at any time. So that's great and you can just you know, pause and go back later if you need to. Uh, then after you complete surveys, you can also participate in a genetic component. So you can uh, get a DNA sample taken um, and you can find out about your genetic uh, history, ancestry, or traits if you wish to receive that information back. 
Uh, and we also ask that you share your unsigned health records so we can connect kind of like your survey questions to your genetics and then um, do your electronic health records. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm hearing this word genetics a lot. So let's start off with some definitions. Would you want to define genetics for us? What is it? Wow. So um, there's so many ways we can think about what genes are, what our genetics is. The way I think about it is all of us, oh, <laughs> all of us in this room, in this world, we have biologic information in our, the cells of our body that's necessary for kind of our cells to know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And the recipes or the instructions for how those cells do their work comes from our genes. So a gene is like a recipe, it holds information. And it's organ, and actually this is kind of cool. I might get a little emotional, guys. We're in a library. So a great example is if we think about a gene like a recipe, our genes are packaged into things called chromosomes. Those are kind of like books, so a whole bunch of genes that are organized together. We have two copies of every book, one that came from the sperm that created us and one that came from the egg that created us. And then that makes up our genetic library, which unlike this library that probably has who knows how many books, we only have 26 sets of books, 23, sorry. Oh my goodness. I think they might be moving my list. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've allowed to practice as a genetic counselor anymore. You have a total of 46 or 23 pairs, one from the sperm, one from the egg. And so when we look at somebody's genetics, it's kind of like looking at what is written in those recipes by going to those books. And a genetic test kind of does like a spell check. Genetic testing, also known as. <laughs> <laughs> and we also, that's the world. We also got a definition from Siri. Uh, <laughs> she, she, she probably would not have messed up how many things we have. Um, so, I don't know, is that. That's perfect. I, I didn't, I honestly couldn't have defined genetics before today, so I'm grateful to you. Now I can. <laughs> On the topic of definitions, I know we've also heard the word equity a lot. So who wants to define equity for those who are here in person and watching online? Nobody told me I have to do definitions. Do you want to <laughs> I'm the storyteller. So, <laughs> uh, so equity is kind of just uh, well, when we talk about health equity specifically, it's kind of making sure that everybody has the same access uh, to health care and, um, yeah, so it's kind of just like uh, leveling out the playing field. Um, there's a lot of things that need to help inequities. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna, we may or may not get into that, but I have a lot to say about that if anyone has any questions. <laughs> no, Sage, um, go for it. Tell us. <laughs> tell us <laughs> about health inequities. Yeah, go for it. Uh, where do I start? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Let's see. Well, first of all, uh, we there's been a history like in the U.S. in general of like a lot of racist, um, homophobic uh, classes, just practices in general in research and in science, um, and unfortunately also in healthcare. Uh, so over time, that creates an even larger gaps uh, for people of like certain ancestries. Um, that creates even larger gaps uh, for healthcare access and utilization. Um, so, uh, so health inequities can uh, be uh, like one thing, for example, could be like a food desert. You know, somebody lives somewhere where um, they don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables, like their nearest grocery store is very far away, so they're already. Uh, slightly at, at a disadvantage uh, compared to somebody who lives in an urgent area. Um, or even somebody, uh, for example, individuals who live far away from healthcare facilities, that's another uh, kind of like barrier to receiving healthcare. Um, uh, income, you know, people who have, who are typically like lower income, they have uh, less access or just less resources to, for receiving healthcare. Um, so yeah, hopefully with the all this research program, um, we want to kind of level that out 
uh, which is why there's such a big focus on the, um, um, receiving information from people who are historically bio, uh, underrepresented in biomedical research. Um, Awesome! <laughs> All right, so you might have, for those in the physical room, we're going to get to more interactivity in a second. That's why we're in this fishbowl. But I still have a few questions for our keynote speakers before we turn off our live stream and get more into our discussion section. Um, so, Danielle, I know you mentioned that you're the voice um, that genetic history is left at the border. Could you expand more on that and tell people about that? And actually, I can talk to you about, give an example of what you're talking about. And I kind of mentioned it a little bit in the beginning. Um, I was born in Mexico, we moved to Texas when I was three, and for anybody who is a son of a, uh, a parent, immigrant parents, uh, you become a translator as soon as you're able to talk, right? Mm -hmm. As soon as you're able to say any kind of words, you're like, vente, vamos al doctor, vamos al doctor, vamos a la tienda, vamos a la and you're like, you're learning words when you're six that you're like, uh, I don't know why I didn't know equity. I should have learned that. <laughs> but I remember going with my mom to the doctor's office. This Dallas, Texas, picture it. Dallas, Texas, about 1976, 1977. And I'm going with my mom to the doctor. No child should be in the room when their mom is getting shocked and having to translate medical words, technical words. Uh, but there I was, and the doctor would turn to me and say, and this is a true story, not that the rest are true, but this is, <laughs> this, is, this is more true than the other stories. But I would go in with my mom, and my mom was a smoker when I was a kid. And the doctor would ask me, I'm going to pretend you're me, she's like, uh, ask your mom if she smokes. It's like, my mom, he said, look, this is for us. The dog wants to know if you smoke. And I'm like, tell him no. <laughs> And I remember as a seven-year-old kid going, you smell like a chimney. <laughs> How is he not? Now I go, okay, fine. So I would turn to the doctor and say, my mom says she doesn't smoke. And he's like, is she telling you to tell me she doesn't smoke? Or does she really not smoke? And I'd be like, she's telling me to tell you she doesn't smoke. And my mom would be like, ¿Qué está diciendo? And what are you saying? I'm telling him that you don't smoke. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So what that created was this internal information for me that you're not supposed to speak the truth in your And I, I figured that as a Catholic little boy, there were two people that I should always lie to, and it was the doctor and the priest. <laughs> Why? I don't know, right? But you just never tell them the truth. So I created that gap for myself. And uh, as a cancer survivor, um, as somebody who has diabetes, we deal with cholesterol, Every time I go to the doctor, the doctor says, what are you eating? I'm like, water and salads. <laughs> All the time. And the numbers of doctors, like the numbers don't lie. And I'm like, I swear, I had, I had a toothpick and some air for breakfast <laughs> this morning. That's all I ate. But um, that created that inequity. And I think sometimes, yes, the system creates it for us. But sometimes culture, religion, or social norms creates for ourselves. So all that to say that the reason that I and evolve is because I want to show the people that we can be honest with our doctors. I don't know about priests, but you can be honest <laughs> with doctors and, and it's going to help us in the long run. So that's my purpose. That's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> so to add on to that, uh, going into what you're saying, how culturally there can be some, there are some cultural beliefs that lead to uh, more health inequities. Uh, at least, you know, specifically in my culture, I, I'm also Latino, and my, I feel like my family has this kind of idea that, like, you know, we're super resilient, nothing can bring you down, and so they don't even want to accept the fact uh, when they, when they do receive diagnosis, they're like, no, 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 like, that's not true, and like, no, it is. the doctor just said that, you know, you have this condition, um, so, and it's like, no, but that's, that's not true, and they, like, kind of don't want to believe it, so I kind of, like, further, you know, it, it's, it unfortunately is worse for their health. I think one of the reasons inequities are so difficult to face or resolve or attack is that they are multi multi level. So there can be cultural components, but there's systemic, like at the level of hospitals or our society. There's also medical culture can perpetuate inequities. 
sometimes providers make assumptions about people based on what they look like, where they're from. And so I think that's why these gaps in, in getting equal and personalized care exist. It's, it's not easy. We can't just fix one thing. It's many different pieces that need to be addressed. And I also think that's why it's all of our responsibility, it's not just the responsibility of one cultural group or one profession or one healthcare system, but it's a... Definitely. I'm going to ask this question to all of you before we turn off the live stream and engage more of the people in the fiscal room with us. But so you mentioned it's the responsibility of everybody. So for people watching online or the people here with us, what's the number one thing that you think they should do to help fight health inequity? And it's okay if you can't think of the number one, just something folks can do. Is it join all of us? Is it um, meet with their local genetic counselor? <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was that. I <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, as for me, you know, I I try to kind of do my part um, as a, as a community engagement person. So I engage specifically with the LGBTQI plus community and also the Latino community. So and that's specifically my area of interest uh, when it comes to health equities. Um, so yeah, I I try to engage my community, my family. Um, to you know, participate in research, go to the doctor. It's also difficult because a lot of the research that we have is based on people of like European ancestry, um, which also contributes to this, um, this gap. Um, and like the purpose of this event, uh, what we can do is participate in research to make sure that information from us and people like us uh, are being accounted for. Definitely. Uh, for sure. I think one thing that we can do is this is something my mom passed away, so she's not gonna come in. Mm -hmm. not gonna get uh, but they were not about doing the homework. Mm -hmm. My parents were about um, listen to what the comadre says, what the neighbor says. I la comadre dijo que no, so we just didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, do you, let's do the homework. Let's, I mean, mind you, this is back when you have to go to the, the library. Right. And research, and, but there was never any motivation to do the research and find out for ourselves what was truth and what was not, what we could trust and what we could not. And and for the people here and the people watching, don't take our word for it to, to join all of us. It's, but go online, do the homework, read the information, find that balance. Uh, I'm all about energy work, and it's about mentally, physically, and spiritually being aligned. And going, that is something that I want to be involved in. Uh, if you've never been involved in any kind of research, in any kind of studies, and you're and you don't have the answers that you're looking for, then maybe being part of research and studies is the way to go. Not to mention, uh, I don't have kids. I have a godson, and he's two. And I'll fight anybody who doesn't say that he's the most cutest thing in the world. Uh, I want to leave some kind of legacy for him. I want to leave a dynasty. I want him to look back and go, oh, my godfather did the homework. He participated. He wants to make sure that I grow up better. Um, so it took, I'm not going to lie, I'm 53 years old. It took me a while to actually click and go, what is this about? But once I did, I'm so glad that I did. And again, it, it, there's so much out there. You can go anywhere. Um, but Join all of us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I think because because the inequities that are in exist are multi-level, that means there's a lot of opportunities for us to find the place where we can make the most impact. And so I think whether you're in the political realm where potentially there's a lot of policy that can be done. If you're on the patient or participant side, being willing to maybe hear things out. If you're on the healthcare provider side, really thinking about like, what is the perspective you're bringing to a room? What are, who aren't you seeing in your clinic? For me, I started in genetics 20 something years ago and I knew that where I wanted to be was counseling in Spanish for patients who didn't have access. And so that was the part of the world I could potentially impact. 
I can't impact on so many other things. But that was like the one piece where maybe I can make a difference. And so that is where I decided to focus. And so I think it's really for each of us thinking about where can we make the biggest impact and how can we do that? And then supporting others in their, in their lives. Fantastic. Um, well, I think we're gonna close down the live stream now. For those watching online, make sure you go joinallofus.org forward slash California. That's our closing action to you. And our friends 